Hello again, everybody. This is James Bartley, and you're listening to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Today, our very special guest is Nikki Colombo. Nikki Colombo experienced a full-blown, spontaneous Kundalini Rising event in 2007 that catapulted a starseed awakening, opening her third eye to perceive multidimensional realities and communication with the evolutionary forces of light known as the Melchizedek Guardians. Her spiritual mission is to support humanity through its evolution with education and awareness, consulting the impacts of the energy shifts upon the planet and human consciousness. She is an empath, intuitive, spiritual guide and healer, near-death experiencer, a walk-in, researcher, writer, psychic, astrologist, numerologist, contactee, ET experiencer, chakra clearer, starseed and tarot reader. Nikki was guided by the spiritual hierarchy to comprehend the science of ascension and its dynamics upon the layers of energy fields and electromagnetic grids. This understanding of spiritual technologies was experienced by her own personal conscious evolution and began her transition into a spiritual guide during this planet's ascension cycle leading to enlightenment. And her website is NikkiColombo.net and her radio show, which can be found on Truth Frequency Radio, is TFRLive.com forward slash Nikki Colombo. So without any further ado, Nikki Colombo, welcome to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Hi, James. How are you going, sweetie? I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for coming on. You've got quite a story to tell, Nikki. Give our uh, listeners an idea of who you are and how you came to this realization. Give us an idea of the unfoldment process and how you went from the, the magical girl to the magical person you are now. Well, um, I always knew that I was different because the world showed me that I was different as a child. Uh, like every like dance school I went to or theatrical school I went to or school I went to, uh, people would uh, treat me differently. Uh, they must have sensed that um, something was different about me. And, of course, I didn't realise, you know, growing up what was different about me. And um, I, 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 I knew that I had, um, I, I knew that I could tune into certain psychic abilities but of course back then I didn't know you know what the word psychic actually meant and um, it wasn't until I turned about 40 that uh, I had a full-blown uh, kundalini rising and I didn't know what that meant either until I, I typed in all the symptoms and this word kundalini came up and um, I, I, I started on my journey um, uh, because I just after that I became like a more of a I just became a knowledge junkie and I just wanted to know what had happened to me and I, I realized that like on the internet now there's um there's um a lot of information about kundalini but um the one I had was not sexual because there's five channels in that lower um spine in the in the root chakra of the kundalini and the one I had uh went all through my chakras and just literally blew the top of my head off where I could actually see light exploding at, at the top of my crown chakra and uh, and and the day before that happened i i was getting this um i was getting like this rumbling in my feet and i could hear my my name being called on the right hand side and and it, it sounded very close to me but it also sounded very far away and it also sounded like my mum but it also sounded like me because we sound very similar on the phone and I'm like, what's this? This is my favourite saying, what's going on? What's this? What's happening, you know? And um, this this rumbling in my feet kept happening and then it just kind of rumbled and went all the way up um, through my body. And and the very next day I was I was just, you know, uh, vacuuming the house and, and I also had some music on but I also had um, someone had sent me uh, George Norrie's um, Coast to Coast with David Icke. And I'm just, you know, vacuuming the house, you know, having a bit of a dance around like I usually do. And 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 next thing, you know, and he's talking, 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 all that kind of stuff. And next thing, George Norrie asked David, I, how long has this conspiracy been going for, David? And David says, well, uh, people might be shocked to hear this, but this conspiracy has been going on for thousands of years. And at that moment, I dropped the uh, vacuum cleaner. I turned it off. I turned the music off and I just sat down and I just listened to the two hours and I went who is this guy and so I, I discovered David Icke I went to see him live I bought all his books I've seen him live twice actually and being in Australia that's a real feat because we're so far away from everybody 
down under down here, as you know, James. Yes. And um, <laughs> uh, and um, and so it's it's uh, you've got to take those opportunities when they come because not many people come to Australia because it's so far away. So. Um, you know, I was right into him and um, and learning so much about myself and, and that knowledge spread out to, to all other areas and I, I went to see Michael Tazarian live and he talked about transhumanism and that's all coming and, and unfolding, you know, now, right now, as we speak right now. And so is David's stuff as well. As well. And, uh, and then I got into Chris Everard's stuff and um, we became pretty, pretty good friends and I started becoming, uh, he asked me to be the Australian affiliate for um, the Enigma channel and uh, I was uh, responsible for um, the delivery uh, for his uh, iBooks. And so, you know, it, it, it just, you know, it just went on, it went on from there more and more knowledge that, that I gained. But at that time, um, strange things started happening in the house and I, 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 actually, I actually started having at first, positive ET contact, and it was beautiful. And um, they're benevolent, um, sorry, benevolent, and they're beautiful light beings that kind of glow in and out, and um, they're self-perpetuating. They're not the false light. They're, they're the real light. And um, I found myself, um, which I, I, I presume I was, uh, they might have taken me down to the centre of the earth, and... Um, and that's where this kind of kundalini soul trance for walking kind of thing happened to me. And I saw this most beautiful woman and 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 um, she was just smiling at me and her, her hair was parted in the middle and it was all long and wiggly and she reminded me of Galadriel from uh, The Lord of the Rings and her hair was pale peach and pale violet and it, it just glowed in and out. And, and we were sitting in this beautiful garden and she was just smiling at me and this beautiful love this you know I'm very lucky that I've had a very uh, tiny glimpse of what unconditional love really is like because this love that I felt was not a, a joyous love where you're in love with someone you know and you're dancing around and you're you know like woo, and it wasn't a blissful love you know in samadhi after you've you know had you know been in meditation this was a love that's kind of under you know it's indescribable it's kind of in between that and um and, and she was just smiling at me. She she knew what was going on. Um, at that time, of course, she wouldn't be able to tell me because, it, you know, the, you need to experience 10 years of life experience to finally work out what's really going on with you because it takes you on such a journey. Um, but and, the, and and I you know I've spoken to other people on other um, radio uh, shows and I and I, I have a giggle now and I say. She, she smiled at me with her, ma her mouth closed because she probably didn't have any teeth, <laughs> right? <laughs> because there's no bone because she's a th etheric, right? She's ethereal, right? And if, if she had a smile at me, she had no teeth, it probably would have freaked me out, right? So um, uh, after that experience, um, the negative um, ETs uh, experiences started uh, coming in. And strange things started happening in the house. Things like, you know, all my, um, you know, like my dishwasher broke down eight times and it was replaced and my washing machine would break down. And then, you know, I, I passed my hand over the microwave one day and it blew up. And then every time I would park my car and you have to use those bloody, you know, magnetic strips to stick it in the thing oh, and get the ticket and lift up and go out. They wouldn't work. That something was going on with my electromagnetic field, and I, and all the cars behind me were all piling up beeping. Like, come on, hurry up and get out! It was so stressful. And then, um, you know, and then my my dog was murdered, and then you know my my son was knocked unconscious, and I had to bring him back to life. And that's a whole another, you know, that's another that's another show, um, James. And then you know, and my daughter was being you know electronically attacked, and we were fighting over stupid things in the house, and. And it was just the stress was, you know, just incredibly high, high levels over silly little things. And, 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 you know, strange things like I'd be using my mouse on my computer and suddenly the mouse would start, you know, rolling down by itself and it would take me to certain, you know, websites and stuff. And I'm thinking, what's going on here, you know? And then my internet bill was blown way out of proportion so I could hardly pay for that. And, I knew that I wasn't using all that data and then um, 
And then I, I, I would get a certain communication to go outside and take pictures of the moon uh, very early in the morning. And those pictures that I, I got of the, mo of the moon on my, my iPhone 3 back in those days. And you could see these very large pink towers on the moon and then I took another picture of the moon and there's like this green stuff everywhere and and um, and I and then I, I realize now that that was to gain my my trust in thinking that I was actually having communication with my higher self and it wasn't it was v2k it was voice to God it was an electronic uh, messages that were being received from my phone and um, making me think that I was um, you know having communication with you know, celestial beings, you know, but I look back now and I think, my God, I was so tricked and deceived. And, 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 I, and, and then one day I woke up with this strange mark on, on my, my right leg and it was like a, a purple dotted triangle and um, it kind of like looked like puncture marks. And above that is this little grey uh, waving at me like saying, hi, and I'm thinking... I had some sort of, you know, ET contact with the greys. And on the other side of my leg was this thumbprint that, you know, where your knee is just inside the thigh, there was this man's thumbprint. And, you know, I, I ring my my twin flame who's over in America and he, he's married and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's an alien love bite kind of thing happening there. And I said, did you have any dreams last night? He goes, yeah, I was dreamt I was, you know, making love to you. I said, I... I had that dream too. So, so what that was? That was my lab experience because when I went to Misha Johnson and had a, um, a, you know, a, a regression, and I could see, you know, these little greys in my room. I, I, I couldn't, I could feel them at the time, but at the time I couldn't see them. But, but looking back through this um, very comfortable spot of, of observation, you know, through my my um, hypnosis and hypnotic regression. I could see these three little greys in the room and I and I, I was lying on my bed. All, could, all I could see was my feet because um, I was just all starlight, just light, just starlight. And on top, overlapping this um, life movie experience that I was looking at with these little three greys, and they looked more blue. They were little, typical little greys, but they were more bluish. But over the top of this um, this this live movie that I'm watching of myself being there in the bedroom was this my lab experience and and they 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 taken me obviously to an like an underground base and um you know my legs and my 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 feet were strapped and um and I was looking at my my arm and I could see this this guy right and he had like the doctor's mask on the doctor's little hat on and everything but just looking at his hand his hand was so big and so large and so creamy and and white, creamy white and perfect. I'm like, you know, like, James, we live in Australia. You know that everybody has freckles here. There's just no way you can have not not have freckles here. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm, I'm like, look at this hand. It's so huge and creamy and white and perfect and everything like that. And then he was doing something to my right arm, obviously maybe strapping it down. I don't know because I was so focused on his his creamy, beautiful skin. And then I looked up at him and, oh, my God, I see these great big almond-shaped, bright electric blue eyes with these long eyelashes. And, and he stood up and I'm like, holy cow, he's got to be about eight feet tall at least, right? And, and I'm like, he's kind of cute, you know, like, he, those eyes are too pretty to be a guy. And, you know, I'm getting a little bit personal here, but he actually, uh, I know he took my DNA and, uh, you know, the girls will know out there that it was kind of like a pap smear. Mm -hmm. And so, and so, and I could feel, you know, I won't go into much detail, but uh, the girls, the girls out there will know, and some guys will know that too, but I could feel that they were just taking my DNA and I could actually feel it was or maybe the hybrid hybrid program or um, some sort of off-world, you know, trade program or whatever. Who knows, you know, probably gazillions of programs out there. But um, around all the hospital instruments too was all black and space, like very deep space. And I was only the only patient there. 
Um, and, and it looked very like, and there was no one else there, and it was very deep and dark. And I'm like, where the hell am I, you know? And so, like, you know, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, what is it? And I worked out that, um, you know, these these marks on my leg must have been, um, they use, I think it's called sc scopolamine, which is yeah, a scopolamine, truth serum. Yeah, yeah, it's like That's a truth it. serum. That's it. Yeah, it's a truth serum. And, um, and I haven't gone back to my regression. I could go back and I could have a deeper regression and find out more detail about that. But you know what, James? I don't want to do it. I'm happy with what's just I know about, you know, enough. I don't want to go deeper because it's way too traumatic and, uh, you know, and for months I was so pissed off that, you know, um, you know, I found out that, you know, um, my genetics are being traded off world or some sort of programs going on and, you know, and the elites are keeping all the high tech for themselves and not helping humanity and, and, and I was really, really angry for you know, total violation of human rights, all that kind of stuff. Oh, I went through all of that, and you bastards. And, uh, I was really angry and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, and that settled down, and I've accepted it for what it is right now. And um, and I've just come to, you know, the understanding that that's, you know, I might have written it in my spiritual, you know, contract before I got here. Whether I did or not, I don't know. But the fact is that I've made peace with that. And, um, and, and now I'm in a situation where I can help other people um, with, you know, um, with their experiences because of, of what I've gone through. Well, that's, that's key testimony. And if you wouldn't mind me asking, and, and I understand entirely what you mean about not wanting to delve into certain things, because if you're at peace with it and if you've come to terms with it and you're at a place in your heart and in your being and your energy space where not only can you can function, but you can thrive and you can, you can manifest and, and and be creative. Sometimes opening some of these cans and stuff, you know, cans of worms, so to speak, can kind of set us back a little bit. So you you might as well just keep marching on. So I so I applaud you on that, and I thoroughly understand that. Now, if you don't mind, I understand if you don't want to talk about it because it's kind of a personal thing. But you you brought up a key issue about an alien love bite situation, and mm -hmm. and, and the astral love making aspect to it. Mm -hmm. now, a lot of people have come to me over the years. I've I've spoken to and, and debriefed many people, men and women, who have gone through this, right? And, and I've gone through an alien love by myself. It was it was a really bad one. It, it could, took me about three years to get over this gal, at least. Yeah. Um, if yeah. you don't mind, without naming any names and without you know, you know, anything personal about y your twin flame, can you give us an idea of, of the dynamics of, of how that? And I'm probably it probably happened more than once the astral love making, but do you feel because you mentioned the greys at the outset of that experience, do you feel that the greys there were the ones that instigated that in some way, and then kind of put you and your twin flame together in some kind of other dimension, some kind of ethereal realm? Absolutely, I felt like they kind of wanted to say piggyback on my consciousness and his consciousness, so they could feel what we were going through uh, for us it was like they turned love against us it was traumatic we were both absolutely. on the brink, brink of we were on the brink of friggin suicide yeah. you know i mean they tortured the bloody hell out of us because he's in america i'm here he's married he's got you know he had at the time he had um just two children or three children and what the pinnacle was was that <laughs> his wife had uh, got pregnant and had another child and I knew then that I could never be with him and that was that set me off in a um you know in a in a, a, a terrible you know horrible broken hearted dismal I don't want to be here this is horrible because you know when I first woke then I woke up James there was nobody around me I, I grew up on the Gold Coast and I was the only felt like I was the only person that had woken up and everyone was you know looking at me as if I was nuts and you know and I didn't have anyone to latch on to and the thing is, is with, with my twin flame, he, um, we caught up on Facebook, you know, 30 years later because we used to go to the same um, theatrical school together. And when we caught back up on, on Facebook, his life and my life were like almost mirrored. And I find this wonderful person. And I was with, you know, my, my husband at the time too. So we were having this, you know, massive, beautiful, you know, connection online. 
remembering about all the, the connections that we had in uh, through our lives, which were almost like a, a bloody mirror. It was just incredible. I could not believe that there was someone out there. And um, and but that at that time we didn't know what was going on, of course. But looking back, we've worked it out. And you know, and just and what they do is they set you up and you have this wonderful oh my god and this is love and da, 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 da. and then it starts to you know it starts to go down because they torment you and they 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 twist everything and how they do it they do it electronically through the computer they do it through uh the the electromagnetic field they muck up your communication so you have misunderstandings and you have fights unnecessarily uh with you're, you know, you're this person that you, you know, that you love very, very much, and um, and it and it brings out all the horribleness, and you throw it at them, and they throw it at you, and you know, because it's so powerful this connection that um, these <clears throat> these fights were, you know, traumatic, and then when everything starts to screw up, and you can't be with that person, and you know, and I, it was like three o'clock in the morning one day, and I'm like. Hilary Ramo is a really good friend of mine and I I got online because, you know, we're over in Australia so it's a different time. So it's 3 o'clock at, at my time and I think it must have been, you know, early morning at her time. And I said, I was just thinking about you. And she goes, well, what were you thinking about, sweetie? And I went, oh, you know, my twin flame's having a baby. And she goes, how do you feel about that? And I went, well, that really sucks. And, um, and he swears that there were no sexual relations there. He swears that this child came along. Um, you know, and I know some people are going to go straight to the religion, religious books and go, oh, 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 oh. And she said it might have been a um, an ET intervention to um, to stop us, to keep us separated because he didn't want to have any more children. And, um, and then the strangest thing happened. She goes, have you seen uh, the movie Looper? And I went, uh, no, what's that all about? Um, <clears throat> so the very next morning when I wake up, after I've, I've, you know, I've, I've gone back to sleep after talking to Hillary, she she put me onto the the love bite. She was going to buy the book for me. She couldn't buy the book for me. They were stuffing up, you know, um, the electronics there where she couldn't buy it and send it to me. So you've got to read this book. This sounds exactly what you're going through and all this kind of stuff, setting you up, you know, all this kind of stuff was just incredible. You know, it was just tick 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 tick. She asked me all these questions and I just went tick tick tick. Yep yep yep, all of that. And the next morning I wake up and here's my I look at my, I had like a whole collection of um, C, um, DVDs, right, because I'm a movie buff, movie buff mad, most of it all sci-fi, you know. Right down the very bottom um, of this CD rack, right, and like all the racks had come out so that actually the CDs were actually uh, on top of each other. So you actually had to lift 100 CDs up just to get one down the bottom and guess what was right down the bottom, sticking out an inch right down the bottom was the movie Looper. And I'm like, I pulled it out and I said to the kids, what is this doing here? Did you guys buy this? No. Did your friends bring this over? No. And I'm like, yeah, this manifested in my house, James. It was incredible. And and I'm like, oh, my God. And, I, you know, and I, I know people are talking about this issue right now with the Mandela effect with things disappearing because the timelines are changing and people's yeah. stuff is moving. And they're like, hang on, I... I put my drink down there. Where the bloody hell is my coffee gone? I know that I put my coffee there and it's disappeared, right? So all that kind of stuff was happening to me. And then after I got on to Eve, Eve Logan and I looked at all her stuff and I contacted her and she gave me some information and, I, and I'm and i like, oh, my God. But before all of that, James, before I realised what was going on, they tortured the hell out of us. They really did. You know, they put us in situations where, you know, we just didn't want to be here. We were going to both commit suicide. And that's a really horrible, traumatic way to be played. And they were coming into our dreams and messing us up, thinking all this stuff is going on. And like I said to you before about having that mind slide of me thinking that I was with my twin flame that night when I was going through the my lab, I'm grateful for that because I don't really want to know all the traumatic stuff. I know enough to know, you know, okay, I've had that and I've made peace with it. I don't want to know about what I said when they gave me that scopolamine, you know, like, you know, can you, hey, Nikki Columbo, can you uh, drive a space, can you uh, drive a spaceship? Like, no, I don't. I don't need a bloody spaceship to travel in, you know, in those other realms. I don't need, I'm 
past that. So I'm having a giggle about that right now. So whatever they got out of me, who knows? They probably wanted to know all the stuff about my my ET contact experiences. But you know the the you know the benevolent ones wouldn't put me give me information to put me in that situation. So I mean you know so they just wanted to know you know maybe what what was going on maybe in the in the other realms. And you know my twin flame now I've 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 said to him look you know this is this is six years later. And I said, look, I get this funny feeling that you're a super soldier and I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want you to think that, you know, I was feeding your ego and you getting your ego and going, well, I'm a super soldier and all this kind of stuff. And I told him, I said, you're not in close proximity to it. This is why I couldn't pinpoint it, right? I said, you're a part of it, but you're not in close proximity. So he's recently found out that he is a super soldier, but he was more of a spy, and we have had these similar dreams where we go out and do these missions, right? But we are not heavily involved, say like um, like Max Spears or say um, you know James Casbolt. We weren't like directly involved. It was more on the surface, and I couldn't pinpoint it. I, I didn't know what words to use, so all I could say was, "You're just not in close proximity to it." And he's worked out now. Okay, um, all right, okay, and he's just recent. They found out just in the couple, last couple of weeks and him and I have both been on these certain missions and maybe that's why we both had my lab experiences to find out what's going on in these other realms. That's that's all, all I can work out from this 3D realm. So, in, in some yeah. of those, did you find yourselves in, in what seemed to be foreign or European or Middle East cities and, you know, in hotel rooms and, and, and lobbies and... And driving no. around in cars and no, we were on other worlds. In other oh, words, other worlds entirely. Yeah, yeah. And like we get out of a spaceship, and um, this is so funny. I like I'm looking at myself from behind, and I look like Lara Croft because I had the silver space space suit on, and my hair was plaited all the way down, but I had this big gun. I think I've talked to you about this, right? And I had this big yeah. gun. He had the big gun, and all we do is we hop out of the ship. And this place is very, very dark, very dark, royal blue, could hardly see much, you know, rocks everywhere, very barren. And all we do is we just fire this gun and and, and we and, and the light out of the gun just uh, encompasses us in a big sphere and his sphere as well. Plus I had a, a very, very large white dog with me. This dog was so big I could ride him like a donkey. He was so big that his back came up to my waist. Beautiful, white, beautiful dog, right? And all we do is we jump out of the ship, we fire these guns, they're like a light gun, and we just fire, it goes around us, and then we fire it again, we shoot, 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 shoot the light, hop back in the spaceship, and fly off. And that's it. That's all we're doing. That's all we know right now. So it's not on world, this stuff is off world. So something's going on in these other, you know, levels. I know that, you know, that we have other bodies on, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, all the way up to the twelfth dimension. I know that we have you know, bodies, um, are other bodies that are connected to all those other dimensions and they're, we're obviously involved in some sort of mission and I, I know that we're not, you know, we're not the only ones. I know other people out there, oh, you know, that's just dreams and stuff. Look, I know the difference between a dream, like when you wake up in the morning and you know every single detail, you are exhausted, you feel like you've been uh, on, a, on a mission like, you know, uh, a nine-hour journey like, you know, when you watch Lord of the Rings and you watch Lord of the Rings 1, 2 and 3 and you're like, oh, my God, it feels like I've just been on, I feel like Frodo, I've been on this major mission and, you know, and I'm so dehydrated and I'm exhausted and everything. You wake up in the morning and you remember every single detail uh, and you feel it and you know it in your bones and you're that innate knowing you go, wow, that was incredible. And then when you talk to someone, you know, who's very, very close to you and you go, okay, tell me what happened last night. And then they tell you the same dream. You go, oh, are you kidding me? Is this for real? Is this real? What's going on here? This is real. What's going on? Okay, we're on a mission together and it's in, in the other realms. That's all I can think about. That's all I can understand from my, my level of knowledge right now. Well, I absolutely believe you. I, I've heard of similar things. And do you remember actually getting there or do you just like seemingly manifest or arrive at a certain place or a certain I, world? Yeah, where um, I, I don't know how we get there. I'm already there and we're out of the ship and bang, we do this light stuff and then we just hop on the ship and go and that's it. You've heard, of other, 
You've heard of other people from this too. Well, not exactly what you described. I've, I've heard of others that went... The, not only are there these deep space ops with presumably other humans from this world, but there's also these standalone ops that not even ETs are involved that, you know, people like yourself just have the means to do these things. Sometimes you, you work with ETs, but sometimes you don't. You, you do these standalone ops that you just ha have the means to do it, right? And I'm wondering what the life thing is about that you describe, whether you're, and I've heard this from other people when they recall past lives or parallel lives where they were like an energy field and they went from world to world to kind of catalyze life to like activate life, so to speak. And I'm wondering if it's along those lines or if the light field you're putting out is some kind of, uh, you know, information gathering thing or something is going on because if you're going from world to world and you're doing this, you know, some data must be getting collected and stored or something is activated or a combination of both. Yeah, I just feel like because we're in such a dark place, we're bursting the light out there. Uh, and it's obviously data that we're, that we're bursting out there. And it's kind of like, um, you know, we're here to like, you know, just, you know, shine the light. Whether that's symbolic or not, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> it's probably both. But, um, you know, when you wake up in the next morning and you have the same dream, you're like, wow, you were on some, we're on a mission doing something. So these bursts of light, you know, um, you know and, and, as, and it encompass you as in a sphere to protect you, but you're also firing this light everywhere and you like, it's like a, a burst of white, very pure, pure white platinum light that's just, shh, you just burst it out there and you hop on the ship and then you go to the next world, and it repeats over and over again. That, wow. That's Yeah, that's is, is the there only... Much, is there much communication between you two, or you just know what you're supposed to do? And you're we just know. Focused on... Yeah, we know. We're, well, we're both highly psychic. Highly psychic. You know, like, I, I, you know, like, put it this way. He'll ring me, and he'll say, what's wrong? No hello, no nothing. And I'll ring him, and I'll go, what's up? You know, like, there's no, like, hello, how are you going? It's, like, straight away. What's up? Oh, yeah, okay. You know what I mean? So we yeah, just know. Yeah, you just tune right into each other. You just, you, just, you just know. And my family's like that, too. And my mother's like that, too. My, my children are like that, too. You just know. So there's some, some definitely some soul connection there that, you know, with. And I think that's the reason probably why they, they, they um, facilitate um, any consciousness like us because of our, um, you know, our psychic abilities. And that's what happened to me when I had my kundalini. Like, I, I went from someone who was mildly into sci-fi to someone whose psychic abilities came online and I got all these, like, you know, in brackets, superpowers, you know. And I know a lot of people think that's, you know, oh, that's really cool. But, um, <laughs> you know, um, you work really, really hard to, to, to navigate through these new energies and these superpowers that you have because, you know, um, you've got to be very, very responsible for it uh, and, and it takes a lot of work because those, those energies can, you can turn, turn, turn dark and you can, you know, accidentally hurt people. So you've got to be very careful about, um, you know, having, you've got to be very responsible when you start having these superpowers come online, you know, because, you know, <sighs> You can do some damage, not only to yourself, to other people. So it's not as, as cool as as, as, you, as everyone thinks it is out there. And obviously these gifts were given to me because I'd, I'd done some sort of work in a past life or um, there's some sort of, you know, um, it was like a galactivation to, you know, get me to the point where I'm ready to facilitate, um, you know, planet Earth to meet their galactic family. That's the future. That's the new evolution. That's that for me is the new, the new human. And because of the stuff that I've been through, um, I can facilitate that without fear. This is a very pinnacle point because fear can be, you know, you can educate someone, and you have to be. You're right on that middle line where you're educating them so that you self empower them not to put them into fear and keep them in a victim program. And that is really, really a, a delicate. Yes, it is. It's a, <laughs> very, it is. Very delicate line because 
when I went through all my low, my lab, I was going through the victim program, like, you know, um, when my dog was killed and all that kind of stuff, you know, and then my, doc, my doctor gave me the wrong antibiotics. I ended up having anaphylactic shock in the hospital, having a near-death experience, and and I was in two worlds at once, and they were saying, you know, you can you can come with us now, you know, and I'm like, no, no, I'm not leaving my children. I'm not going. I'm not leaving my children. And then the, the second major thing that happened to me was um, um, I was just sitting in my car waiting to drive, drive into my driveway and, and this girl came out, my next door neighbour's daughter came out. She had a big fight with her, her mother and she was all ramped up and stuff and, you know, I beat the horn so I could get into my car park, you know, and she's come out and she just went right off at me and then she grabbed the top of my head and just punched into me about 10 times and I saw her eyes go black and she grunted like like this and then she did it again and you know what James right in the middle of that guess what I heard I heard this boy 2k um message saying to me let her do it oh jeez. and I was black and blue for weeks after that and I knew that that was because I was online and I was trying to wake everybody up. I was really in the thick of it and I was being my lab at that time and targeted and all that kind of stuff and I didn't know at the time. Um, you know, I showed you the photos and everything like that and um, I know that, that that was negative energies. I could feel and see a negative entity go into just, you know, latch onto her auric field and go into her and be utilised to try and take me out because she tried to get me on the temple where you hold all your memory and I put my arm up, um, you know, my forearm up, you know, to block her. And uh, and then she did it again and now she's in jail and her kid's taken away and I actually feel sorry for her that she was, her anger was used to take out a starseed and a light worker. And you know what, I, I you know, that put me in the, in the victim program. And, and I, I was even under the victim program in Queensland, you know, when I was going through all the court stuff and all that kind of stuff. They, they would label me as the victim, right? And so, and I'm trying to fight all this, right? Now I realise the program, I could have sunk into that, oh, poor me, you know, everyone feels sorry for me, blah, blah, blah. No, nah, I'm a warrior. I took this on knowing that this was going to happen. I was going to take, take a few knocks. And I did. And you know what? I'm not scared anymore. I'm really not. You People, transmuted it. I mean, I did. S- someone wails on me like that, I- I'd be switched into like pissed off programming, you know? Yeah, I was. <laughs> I- I'd get over it pretty quickly. You know, um, so it's, it's again, folks, it's an example of taking a negative, uh, you know, turning a negative into a positive. And, and what she talked about earlier, what Nikki talked about, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. If one were to wake up, with all these powers, if, if one gives in to their base primordial impulses and instincts, they're just going to be an evil warlock or evil uh, something or other, like so many already out, out there are, right? So, oh, yeah. You know, Halloween it, it, right now, baby, I can tell you all the spells are out there. That's why there's so much energy going out at the moment. I'm telling yeah. you, like, like a few weeks back, the energy was so dense and so thick. Oh, People yeah. People acting bizarre all over the place. In the, in the few minutes we got left in the first segment, it's been a kick-ass first segment, Nikki. Thank you so much. You're very uh, you, welcome. You mentioned a key point because that incident where the voice of the skull was telling you to be, you know, just to take it, and then the the woman who suddenly gets taken up by an entity and is just, you know, thrashing you is a mm-hmm. classic example of where the voice of the skull, you know, it's an assumption to think that, you know, humans were behind that, but oftentimes they are. Yeah. And an example where it melded with the entity possession because they knew or they may even have instigated it in such a way to make this woman opened up and and just suddenly come under the dominion of a violent entity yeah. thrashing on you. And then the voice, the skull is telling you to just take it. Now, my question before the end of this first segment is it's an important point to make. Please tell the listeners how you differentiate knowing what voice the skull is like how you differentiate between like like a real download from a spiritual higher spiritual place a real indwelling knowingness a real telepathic communication like from your your twin flame vice 
this intrusive voice to skull? Okay, well, um, the difference is is that you can feel that this this your senses are being manipulated from the outside in whereas your real communication comes from your cells and your bones and your knowing and your you just know it it's just you can't see it hear it feel it taste it it's it's like it's in your bones it's just it, an, an, an inner knowing that that um you <sighs> I can't describe it. That's probably the best way that I can probably describe it. You're communicating with your cells are communicating with you. That's the difference, not some sort of electronic frequency that's from the outside being project, rejected into you. That's the difference. It's coming yes, from the inside it's so out. Intrusive. It's so intrusive and it's so ham-fisted, but there's no subtlety involved. You know, for some people, yeah. it's so loud that their head is throbbing. It's, yeah. you know, it sounds like there's like a, you know, like a a voice box right in their heads, you know. Uh, well, anyway, we've reached the end of a fascinating first segment. Nikki, could you, you tell our listeners uh, how they can get a hold of you, uh, your websites, please? Oh, yeah, just go on to www.nikkicolombo.net, N-I-K-K-I-C-O-L-O-M-B-O.net. And I'm also uh, a host on True Frequency Radio, which is um, tfrlive.com. Well, we've reached the end of the first segment with our special guest, Nikki Colombo. If you like what we do here at the Cosmic Switchboard Show, if you believe in what we do, please go to the Cosmic Switchboard, sign up, and become a member. And we'll see you at the top of the next segment.